What you doing there? Tightening up the radiator. Let's let a fan go bad. So today we get to talk to Pat about the latest uh, reincarnation of... Yep, so 95 Nissan uh, 240. I've had since 2000, we did this math before, 2007, 2008, something yep. like that. Uh, one S14, I don't know why, one 240, I don't know why. Uh, I really wanted a Kuki, but I could only afford a Zenki model. This thing popped up in Clearwater, Florida for Stupid Cheat back on the forums, good old Zilvia. And Dad and I uh, drove through the night, went down, picked it up. The guy was awesome, the car was legit. Uh, I forget how much I paid. It was like six grand, something like that. Yeah, it's up there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, by for far. Us. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, by the far. The most we had. Oh, yeah, absolutely. This is like several summers of work um, to get here. But uh, it was overall good value. Car was Street great. car, SR20, SR20s, trans. stock everything, um, basic stock seats, stock interior, stock, it just had an SR uh, basically in it, and uh, had, yeah, basic SR and a set of wheels that actually wasn't part of the deal, but he met me in person, met him, and he was like, hey, you're a nice guy here, and that's where I got the FNs. Yeah, you just don't find that anymore. <laughs> no. Well, I, you say that and you feel like you do, but... <laughs> you going to uh, give somebody the wheels next time you sell a car to them? <laughs> uh, we'll see. Anyway, so you did. You ran the stock car for how many years before obviously going to LS now? I ran from... I had the car street-driven for probably a year and a half, two years. Started autocrossing um, the car, which terrible setup, and it was like a low car like driving to meet stuff like that a lot of fun but wasn't really set up well for that um probably 2009 ish somewhere in there started drifting down at uh drift water which was that uh private track down in north carolina did that for probably two years something like that starting going to summit uh street driving the car there and then just started having i won't say issues but starting to realize that street driving a car especially hundreds of miles to a track day was just <laughs> as you're learning to drive on a track day was just not uh it, i was a worry wart i guess and uh just wasn't fun it was taking the fun out of it because i was too worried about breaking something yep. or having issues and I, I did like last lap of the day i got a rock stuck in between the rim and the tire itself down from drift water and it would lose one pound of air every mile. So I had to continue to stop, put air in the tire, air in the tire, all the way back. Um, and I said, screw it, not worth it. Um, and about that time, we finally invested in a big trailer. We also had other cars. Yeah, the youngest yeah. brother had a Miata yeah. that he supercharged, and he also was doing yep. track and autocross with that. Yep. So the family kind of sprung from we there. We started getting to, to lemons. So I was yep. starting to get do a lot more track days. Uh, in this car, um, seeing what the Lemons car could do. Um, this car kind of wanted to be just a better Lemons car, so to speak, and kind of be a little bit more dedicated to, to drifting. Yeah, so 2010-ish, 2011, 2010. The, S, the, uh, LS, the SR went out. It was still running was, and everything. It was 20, I did the swap to an LS in 2013. 2013, okay. Yep, so I, I probably drifted for three or four seasons uh, with the SR, yep. um, did great, but back in the day there was no, 
like small local track like if you wanted to kind of the culture was there was summit point and a lot of bigger events or shenandoah speedway yep. um and there was no really kind of like today we have spirit or u.s drifted parking lot stuff so the parking lot stuff kind of went away i mean it was there before your time Yep. And maybe around a little bit at the end, beginning yep. of when you started, but it, then it kind of just disappeared for a while. It, so it then disappeared. You were just track of it, and if really. it was there, then it was completely, you know, cageless tandems was not a thing yeah. whatsoever. So, in order to get tandem and actually drive a track and add, have that track experience, which I really enjoyed from the Lemons experience and Chump Car and doing things like that, yep. uh, I, I really like that a lot more than Parking Lot because I associated Parking Lot with Autocross and that just wasn't as much fun. Uh, so, I wanted to do track. Uh, which meant that this thing ha got swapped and uh, yeah. a lot of upgrades. So the car gets caged and the LS basically in the same 18 months, right? Uh, I think it was probably, a, I think it was a narrower window, window than that. Mm -hmm. uh, and really the the straw that broke that was, uh, I went and competed at a VIR um, when it was SR, yep. when it didn't have a cage and the car just felt really good, but it needed more power. Um, and I really liked, I did the first PBM Knuckles, the same Knuckles that are on it now, uh, and the car just felt great. Uh, and I really wanted to go to that experience uh, and keep doing that experience, just have a little bit more oomph and have a cage so that I could actually do tandeming uh, and those kinds of events. Yep. Uh, and I was blowing transmissions left and right. Yeah, the motor was always reliable. Trans is you went three or four of them or what have you. Yep. I would always lose third gear, lost second gear once but always lose third gear in those things. Uh, and it just got old. I started pricing out Z32 trans and, you know, mass work swapped and all that other fun stuff. And it was like, hell. I mean, this is before, as LS craze was kind of starting, but LS is like this motor that's in here was $1,000. Um, so, yeah, so, yeah it just, so it the car was down anyways. The SR went to a friend, right? SR and cashed out yep. and put a cage in, put the cage in here in this garage. It's like uh, the third cage we did, I think. Third something. cage. The limits me out. I think we did the Volkswagen and then this one. Yep. And it's a pretty simple cage, so just so that we can all partake. But it's got the sill bar and it's real simple, straight door bars. It is tied into the A pillars. Yeah, and the, the idea here is like even this plastic panel, I was supposed to keep like the stock windshield because it was still, you know, we had open trailers. It was still, you know, yeah, really that's basic. a good point. Yeah, so everything at that point was open trailer. And it is somewhat finished on the inside too, which is the nice part about the car. And obviously you've had it for a number of years and you've gotten to this point, but you know, it has a dash. It's not just cut apart stock dash or you don't have a stock cluster hanging off of it. You know, you actually bought real gauges. Um, well, yeah. uh, it, again, it was kind of like selling the SR to fund the LS was a, more economical than I thought. Uh, selling an uncracked black S14 dash paid for yeah, <laughs> everything in here. So it's just, okay, I know what I have, um, but it's not necessarily going to fit with where the car's going to go. So cash yeah. out, move up. Um, and I would say, you know, it's a lot of time uh, in the dash and things like that more than anything. Yeah. Um, so fast forward till, let's see, you've had the car, it's been running pretty much the same setup for a while now. Motor's been in the car since 2013. Um, Same motor on have never had our issue. Uh, I mean, it's an it's an LS. Uh, I mean, there's always uh, every time I feel like a blow up, usually it's because I'm running out of gas. Um, so, uh, <laughs> I mean, knock on wood. Uh, I mean, it eats fuel, but other than that, it's been fantastic. Uh, always leaks a little bit of oil somewhere, but honestly, I should not be complaining. Probably makes uh, mid to high threes. Um, completely stock just with a Torqueer V3 cam that they don't even make anymore. So try to replicate this setup on a spare motor. Um, valve springs, just safety, hardened rods, um, ARP studs. Other than that, bearings haven't been touched. Nothing's been touched in it. Just yeah, it's turn awesome. key go. So then 2019, you're at a spirit event and you decided to uh, reshape the rear end a little bit. <laughs> yeah, made a mistake. Uh, I've made mistakes before, but uh, that's not a place that you can uh, make those kinds of mistakes. So uh, tapped the wall and I actually caught, I wish I had the old batch bar. Yeah, so I'll throw some footage in of what the cutout pieces look like, but they, uh, they're pretty mangled. And I caught the bash bar on, on this side here. Yeah, you can see this is you know, the original scrub point, but the old bash bar design kind of wrapped around. It was a full 360, like covered the entire rear bumper. And the way it went forward in order to get that angle, the tube actually came forward like this. And as you can see on this side, it actually, the tip of that tube, which is cut at an angle, caught the inside 
and a gap between two jersey walls. Um, and you can see it on video of it scrubbing, catching, and then instantly ripping uh, the entire rear bash bar off and shifting the rear of the car over probably <laughs> six inches or so. Yeah. So let's, let's show everybody what it looks like today because obviously you spent quite a bit of time between, you know, last September and through probably March really just getting this ready. So uh, it's kind of dark in here. But really quick, if you want to walk us through the setup today. Yeah, so kind of a sawzall and chop the rear of it off. Left like the strips here uh, along either side that held, that held the taillights in and that was kind of the most complicated part. But uh, Paul and I in what, two days? Yeah, two, two good days. Chopped the whole rear off and basically got half the tubing done, which most of the time in anything like this is figuring out what you square. want to do. Getting it square. Yeah, not engineering it. Not sure you know, what's bent, what's good, where's the trunk supposed to sit, not just where it sits right now. Mm -hmm. um, but today, so you mentioned it on, on Instagram once, it's like a Lego kit, and it really is, right? So these bash bars, each one is independent now, so you don't have that issue that you had, yep. you know, at Spirit, where you break one side or you bust one side and it takes out the whole rear of the car. That's exactly. If, if I didn't design the old bash bar to be that way, then obviously this side would have been impacted. It would have been bad, uh, but that side would not have been. Yeah been destroyed might have been a little bit different story about how you fixed it but anyway this is yep. a better setup honestly so there's some heavy box beam here oh yeah with covid it's a perfect time to do this. <laughs> yeah, exactly that's kind of true actually uh still got a jack point so the battery fuel tanks in the stock location obviously there's no radiator back here because that's still up front right and there's some clever things too like the, the light mounting is done with pvc so it has a little bit of flex and if you do hit something or break something you're not going to bend any of the, the major tube work of the car yep so again it's kind of a well-engineered piece at this point yeah just trying to keep it uh, like anything that's painted black shouldn't move and anything painted gray is okay to move is kind of I mean the same way we treat the front bars um, so some things can flex some things don't but uh, yeah and the trunk came out unscathed somehow fortunately somehow but, but, and it's amazing also hats mm -hmm. off to origin over fenders because I have an old photo and this over is literally just crimpled uh, and they've definitely been stretched and they don't line up perfectly, but very impressed uh, for how, how these have done and I was able to reuse them. Yeah. So in 2020, you, we did an event together at US Drift with a, a couple other cars while this one was still getting fixed. Um, yep. Then you just did one uh, a couple weeks ago with this car, yep. uh, 30 seconds or less. How did it go? Uh, went well, just like two mechanical pieces, one of which was the Flexilite fan, which was original, I think, to the car when I bought it back in 2007, 2008. Uh, when the motors itself actually burnt up, uh, so the car was running around a little bit higher than usual, um, but still very usable, burnt through several tires. Uh, the second was these Fortune Auto coils in which we put on uh, during this off season. Just have so much squat uh, that even at the ride height, and I jacked up the rear of the car, put a six by six under one wheel, dropped it, still rolled and was fine uh but with the amount of grip that these tires are making and the suspension it was actually rubbing uh under compression just getting out of the hole and in drift so we had to race so not really a mechanical failure just a shakedown type of thing so yeah a little bit of alignment just, stuff yeah just something that you had to wrench on other than that it was hands-free yeah uh, the entire entire event and you're running stage wheels obviously and you guys probably can't see it because it's dark but these are the kr20a 265 35 18s so, and yeah, you got KR28, 180 treadwear, right? 180, so 180 is in the front. 180 and aired up pretty good. Just trying to do a little bit different setup. This car has always been driven as like a nose heavy, high grip everywhere setup, usually like with Achilles. Uh, so I've been running the Sport 2s for, I mean, probably two years after going LS. So since 2015, something like that, I've always had Sport 2s on the car. And then seeing so many people in the last year and a half uh, have you know, DLAM and other issues. Just started to get away from it. Just, I mean, that's the most expensive part. <laughs> that's not something I can afford to, to have a gamble with. Um, so tested out some Kendas and very impressed. Uh, Price is good, life. grip is good, sizes are great. <laughs> yep. And uh, they also match well with the local groups who also run Kendas at this point. Yep, so Kendas all around and running a, uh, a lot more grip, I would say, probably in the rear just with lower pressures and kind of suspension setup, softer, long traction rod, 
uh, some custom pieces there and kind of less grip actually in the front so the front slides a lot more uh, just because these knuckles even though they're great they feel great they just don't have a ton of angle so the front slides and washes uh, which I'm still getting used to but uh, I really like the feel of it at least in the last event yeah and that's something we've also kind of messed with the BMWs and things like that too where it's a little bit different setup than what you had but uh, great so uh, what's your favorite thing on the car um, <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, I mean, there's just a lot of little things. Um, Your mud flaps, come on, let's be real. Oh yeah, so it's the mud flaps. These are getting edited. Mud flaps. <laughs> Oops, I can't touch them. Here yeah. we go. There they are. The mud flaps are the best thing in the car. I for mean, sure. it used to be like just the feel of it. Uh, it just the car always felt solid. The driving position's been good. I like the dash. You can see so much. Um, yeah, I just. It's kind of like a, a very basic, simple package. It feels weird saying that, but uh, after so much time, but it just feels very, like it's not wise fab. It's not quick change. It's not, um, it's kind of at that in-between level of having a decent, reliable engine and kind of well-sorted parts all the way around. I think yeah. that's what I like about it. It's not, you know, twin turbo crazy thing and then X here or just kind of a, uh, slowly fun project that's been built up yeah um, and this is definitely the advantage of sticking with one car for so long you get to learn as you go and you know where yep. to put your money um you know how to build reliability into it and it's an s chassis so it's classic do you want to start it up um sure let's see if it'll start okay let's <laughs> see if it'll start <laughs> uh batteries connected burn your eyes with fuel yay probably the muffler that's probably my the best off-season upgrade <laughs> which is just this thing was had blast pipes on it for so long and i kept putting a muffler off putting a muffler off feels so good to have a muffler you're getting old pat you're getting old uh, yes it's like you're in your 30s now dun, 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 dun. wow that is a lot quieter it's so nice. All right, well, that just about wraps it up. He's got a little work to do. I know he's looking for a bumper. He does have a hood line around here somewhere, but uh, Hey, if you like this kind of stuff, we've got a couple other cars we can still go through and talk about. Just let us know. Um, but this is definitely one of the oldest cars we've had as a group. Probably, yeah. And uh, probably has the most time and energy spent into it. So it's really cool. Um, yeah, so it's getting kind of late. I need to get out of here. Yeah. And uh, thanks, for, thanks for sticking around. So anyway, guys, hope you like it. Peace out.